In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. In traibor altari Dei. Iudicame Deus et discerne causa meum de gentanan sancta abomine iniquo te lo servoe me. Quia tu es Deus politudo mea, quare miriculis die, quare visis in cedo de matrivit me inimicus. Emite lucem tuam et veritatem tuam, ipsa me deduxerunt et aduxerunt et montem sanctum tuam et in tabernacula tua. Et in sui bod altari Dei, adem politificat juventute mea. Confitebor tibi in citra, Deus, Deus meus, quare cistis es anima mea, quare conturbas me. Speran Deo, quonem atu confitebor ili, salutare votus mei, Deus meus. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum, Amen. In troibod altari Dei. Adem qualitificat juventute mea. Adjutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Qui feci celum et terra. Confitio Deo omnipotente, Beatu Maria Sempre Virgine, Beatu Michele Arcangelo, Beatu Ioane Baptiste, Sanctis Apostolus Petro Paolo, Beatu Patro Nostro Agustino, Omnibus Sanctis et Bobis Fratres, Quia peccavi nimis cogitazione verbo ad opere, Mea colpa, mea colpa, Mea maxima colpa, Ideo precor Beata Mariam Sempre Virginem, Beatum Michelum Arcangelum, Beatum Ioannum Baptistam, Sanctus Apostolus Petrum a Paulum, Beatum Patrum Nostrum Augustinum, Omnes Sanctos et Vos Fratres, Orare pro me ad Dominum Deum Nostrum. Miseriatur Tui Omnipotens Deus, et demisis peccatis Tuis, perduca Te ad vitam eterna. Amen. Confitio Deo Omnipotenti, Beati Maria Sempre Virgini, Beato Michele Arcangelo, Beato Ioanni Baptiste, Sanctis Apostolis Petro e Paolo, Beato Padre Nostro Agostino, Omnibus Sanctis et Tibi Pater, qui a peccavi in nimis coditazione verbo ad opere. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ideo precor Beata Maria Sempre Virgini, Beato Michele Arcangelo, Beato Ioanni Baptista, Sanctus Apostolos Petrum et Paulum, Beatum Patrum Nostrum Agostinum, Omnes Sanctus et Te, Pater, orare pro me ad Dominum Deum Nostrum. Miseriatu Vestri, Omnipotens Deus, et dimissis peccatis vestris, perducat vos ad vitam eterna. Amen. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum nostrorum, tribut nobis omnipotens et misericos Dominus. Amen. Deus tu conversus vivificabis nos. Et plebs tua letari torrente. Ostende nobis Domine misericordiam tua. Et salutare tuum da nobis. Domine exaudia rationem meam. Et clamur meus a te veniam. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuo. Oremus. Salve nobis quesimus Domine. Salus populi ego sum, dici Dominus, de quacumque tribulazione clamaverint ad me, exaudiam eos et ero ilorum Dominus in perpetuum. Attendite populi meus legem meam, inclinate aurem vestram in verba oris mei. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Salus populi ego sum dici Dominus de quacumque tribulazione clamaverint ad me, exaudia meos, et ero ilorum Dominus in perpetuum. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra paxum inibus bonne voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gratias agimus tibi propter maniam gloriam tuam. Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Fidi Unigenite, Iesu Christe, Domine Deus, Agnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccato mundi miserere nobis, qui tolis peccato mundi suscipe de precazionem nostram, qui sedes ad dexteram patris miserere nobis, quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, 
tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuum. Oremus, omnipotens et misericors Deus, universa nobis adversantia, propitiatus exclude, ut mente et corpore pariter expediti, quae tua sunt, liberis mentibus exequamur. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum Filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Oremus, da quesemus omnipotens Deus, ut sancti Ioannis confessoris exemplo in scientia sanctorum proficientes, atque aliis misericordiam exibentes, eus meritis indulgentiam apod te consequamur, Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lectio Epistole, Beati Pauli Apostoli ad Ephesios. Fratre, renovamini Spiritum mentis vestre, et induite novum hominem, qui secundum Deum creatus est, in justitia et sanctitate veritatis, propter quod deponentes mendacium, loquimini veritatem unus quisque cum proximo suo, quoniam sumus invicem membra, iras cimini et nolite pecare, sol non occidat superia iracundiam vestram, nolite locum dari diabolo fur furabatur, iam non furretur. Magis autem laboret operando manibus suis, quod bonum est ut habeat unde trebuat necessitatem pazienti. Dirigator oratio mea sicut incensum in conspectu tuo domine, elevatio manum mearum sacrificium vespertinum. Alleluia, alleluia, confitemini domino et invocate nomen eus, annunciate intergentes opera eus, alleluia. Mundo coro mea, me glavia, me amnipotens deus qui labis ebra. Iubi Domine, benedice, Domino, sit in corde meo, et in labis meo, sut digne et campententa, annunciam Evangelium Suum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et con spirito tuo. Sequencia Sancti Evangelii secundum Matteo. In illo tempore loquebatur Iesus principibus sacerdotum et pharaseis in parabulis dicens. Simili factum est regnum celorum, omini regi, qui fecit nuptias filio suo, et misit servos suos vocare invitatos ad nuptias, et nolebant venire. Iterum misit alios servos dicens, Dicite invitatis, ecce, prandium meam paravi, tauri mei, et attilia occisa sunt, et omnia parata, venite ad nuptias. Ili autem neglexerunt, et abierunt alius in villam suam, alius vero ad negotiationem suam, reliqui vero tenuerunt servus eius, et contum meliis affectus occiderunt. Rex autem cum audisit erratus est, et misis exercitibus suis perdidit homicideas, illos in civitatem illorum succendit. Tunca it servis suis nupse quidem parrate sunt, sed qui invitati errant non fuerent digni. 
Ite ergo ad exitus viarum et quos cumque invener, inveneritis vocate ad nuptias, et egressi servi eus in vias congrega verunt omnes, quos invenerunt malos et bonos, et in plete sunt nuptia discumbentium. In travit autem rex, ut viderut discumbentes, et vidit ibi hominem non vestitum veste nuptiali. Et ait ili amice quomodo hoc intrasti non habens vestem nuptialem. At ile obmutuit. Tunc dixit rex ministris ligatis manibus et pedibus eus, mitite eum in tenebris exteriores, ibi eret fletus et stridor densium. Multi enim sunt vocati, pauci vero electi. Per evangelica dicta de leonto nostre delicta. The epistle is written in the epistle of blessed Paul, the apostle, to the Ephesians. Brethren, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which has been created according to God in justice and in holiness of truth. Wherefore, put away lying and speak truth, each one with his neighbor, because we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down upon your anger and do not give place to the devil. He who was wont to steal, let him steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands at what is good, that he may have something to share with him who suffers need. The Holy Gospel is a continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who made a marriage feast for his son, and he sent his servants to call in those invited to the marriage feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatlings are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it, and they went off, one to his farm, another to his business, and the rest laid hold of his servants and treated them shamefully and killed them. But when the king heard of it, he was angry, and he sent his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The marriage feast is indeed ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the crossroads, and invite to the marriage feast whomsoever thou shalt find. And his servants went out unto the crossroads, and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. And the marriage feast was filled with guests. Now the king went in to see the guests, and he saw there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how didst thou come in here without a wedding garment? But this man was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen. So far the reading of the Holy Gospel. Please be seated. For many are called but few are chosen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we celebrate in the church the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. And the intro it, or the entrance antiphon for this Mass, is something that should resonate in our minds and in our hearts. Salus populi ego sum dici dominus, de qua cumque tribulatione clamavrent ad me exaudium eos, et erro ilorum dominus in perpetuum. I am the salvation of the people, saith the Lord. In whatever tribula tribulation shall they cry to me, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. Should they cry to me in whatever tribulation, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. These words are the words of great consolation. They come from the 77th Psalm, the first verse, and they should echo in our minds and in our hearts. Most biblical scholars tell us that First and Second Thessalonians are the earliest written texts of the Christian faith, that they were written probably between the years 45 and 51, 52, 53. Now, our blessed Lord died on the cross and rose again in 33. So we're talking about 10 years after our Lord's death and resurrection. We are told that St. Paul wrote these letters to the Thessalonians as pastoral letters to teach them because their minds were being disturbed by people saying things to them that weren't grounded in the truth. They were becoming confused and frustrated and not knowing what to do. In 2 Thessalonians particularly, which we believe, again, are written, uh, is written between 45 and 51 A.D., we know that their minds have been disturbed by talk of the end of the world or the end of an age. And in chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, St. Paul begins to address their concerns. Now, chapter 2, you need to know, is a very short chapter. It has only 17 verses in it, and you would do well to read every one of those verses today. Chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians. It's called Christ and the Man of Lawlessness. And St. Paul begins speaking to them by saying, We ask you, brothers, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, that is the second coming, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly. Now what does he mean by being shaken out of their minds suddenly? We'll come to that a little later on, God willing, in this meditation but we can say for sure that being shaken out of one's mind is a way of saying, do not be shaken from what you know to be true. Don't be shaken by what you know to be true. Do not be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by anything allegedly coming from us saying that the day of the Lord is at hand. In verse 4 he says, let no one deceive you in any way. Let no one deceive you. Those Christians of Thessalonica, modern-day Greece, were being deceived by false prophets and false teachers and false words and false teachings. He goes on to say, Let no one deceive you in any way. Verse 4 and verse 5. For unless the apostasy comes first... Unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one doomed to perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God and object of worship so as to seat himself in the temple of God, claiming that he is God. So the apostasy must come first before our Lord returns. And in this apostasy must be manifested the man of lawlessness. 
But what is the apostasy? What is it? Because it's one of the signs of the second coming of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the Greek word apostasia is where we get the word apostasy. Apostasia. And the word apostasia literally means rebellion. Rebellion. Apostasy is rebellion. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, in the biblical sense of the word apostasia, in the Septuagint of the Greek Old Testament, and of course the New Testament in Greek, apostasia is rebellion against God and against His holy law. When I sin, I am in apostasy, because I am in rebellion against God and in His law. When I think that I can define sexual morality or I can define what is right and what is wrong, or that I can go against the laws of nature, I am in apostasy, for I am rebelling against God and His law. When the disciples asked our blessed Lord Jesus for the signs of His second coming, our Lord responded in St. Matthew's Gospel in chapter 24, and St. Mark's Gospel chapter 13, St. Luke chapter 21, <clears throat> this is not a class, so I won't give you all the texts. But our Lord responds and says, False messiahs and false prophets would precede his return, as would an age of tribulation against his church. An age of tribulation against his church. Go back now for a moment to the intro of today's Mass. I am the salvation of the peoples, says the Lord. In whatever tribulation they cry, shall cry out to me, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. So our Lord says that preceding his return would be false messiahs, false prophets, and an age of tribulation against his church, which is his mystical body. Huh? Elsewhere, St. Paul says that uh, in um, 1 Timothy and other texts, he says the false prophets will arrive, false messiahs. It will be an age of tribulation, but it will also be an age of deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Teachings of demons. Teachings of demons. Yesterday afternoon, I sat down in my room in front of the television set and turned it on. And I was getting ready to actually start reading these texts, but I turned on the TV set to be distracted for a few moments. And a commercial came on on the TV about the use of artificial protection in the conception of children, to put it in a kind way. And the teaching sounded very good. It said, sexuality is mystery. Enter into the mystery and enjoy it but have protection. That is what you call the deceitful teaching of demons. On the surface, it almost makes sense on the surface. But once you begin to peel it back, you realize just how erroneous it is. This apostasy, this rebellion, according to the scriptures, according to 2 Thessalonians that I'm looking at, and according to the teachings of the fathers of the church, and most of the Catholic and good scripture scholars say, this apostasy, this rebellion, will be a blasphemous act of unprecedented magnitude. A blasphemous act of unprecedented magnitude. Perhaps bringing idols into a church could be a blasphemous act, especially when they're seen in the churches of Rome. The apostle identified the apostasy by naming a key character connected with the apostasy. He calls him in 2 Thessalonians, as we've just read, the man of lawlessness. The man of lawlessness. Now in Greek that word is ho anthropos tes anomias or ho anthropos tes hamartias which is literally the man of sin. The man who rebels against law. 
the man who seeks to destroy the law, that is God's. In 2 Thessalonians, he is equated with the Antichrist and also called the son of destruction. What we know according to Christian eschatology, the study of the end times, what we know is that this man of lawlessness will be consummate in breaking the law. He will break the law for the sake of breaking the law. He will be blasphemous to say that God is not God without me is blasphemous. I recently read and heard a religious leader of the present time say, God cannot be God without me. That's blasphemy. God does not need me. He does not need you. He does not need anything. God is perfect in himself and complete in himself. And it's in the abundance of himself that he becomes generous and gives you and me the gift of life, the gift of existence, huh? This person will be a consummate, lawless one who breaks the law for the sake of breaking the law. And he will be blasphemous. And he will live in open defiance of God's law, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. The man of lawlessness will both oppose that which is God's, and according to the text, he will exalt himself over every so-called God and object of worship. Hey, everybody, look at me. Aren't I humble? Aren't I great? God has blessed you by sending me to you. Aren't I just wonderful? Watch what I'm going to do next. Now, Paul is careful to say that Indicating false gods means that deities of pagan worship will arise. Now the term for the object of worship in this text is sebasma in Greek, sebasma. And in Greek, sebasma literally means a pagan idol. So pagan idols will be identified with this man of lawlessness, this anthropos, pagan idols, but he'll put himself above even those. This man of lawlessness seeks to make himself the central person of worship. He will be a Satan-energized leader who will stand out. Who will stand out. And his leadership will sweep over the whole world and influence the world as never before Seen. I just find that interesting and I draw no conclusions, but I do point out that a couple of the synod participants this past week said that this synod would bring about such changes and influence the world as has never been seen. Excuse me, nothing can ever outdo the cross, the death of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, his suffering on the cross, his resurrection, nothing outdoes that ever. That makes him the center of the universe and nothing else, huh? Nothing else. And his gospel is the one and only truth. So, saying that this synod can influence the church in a way that has never been seen. Well, maybe it can influence it, but it cannot become the center of it ever, ever. For them, and I'll go back to the text now, back to 2 Thessalonians, around the sixth verse of chapter 2. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who restrains is to do so for the present until he is removed. And then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, whom our Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and render powerless by the manifestation of his coming. So first will come the apostasy, and in this apostasy it shall be exacerbated by a man of lawlessness who will seek to put himself up first in the temple of God. And he will establish idols in the temple of God. And then our blessed Lord says he will come. He will come. And he will destroy him with the breath of his mouth. Now the breath of Christ is what gives life. 
and the breath of Christ can also destroy. The text goes on to say, The one who is coming springs from the power of Satan in every mighty deed and sign with wonders that lie that the man of lawlessness will do all kinds of deception. He will perform wonders. He will look like a man of peace. He will look as though he's trying to establish justice in the world to make it one world of integrity and justice and peace for all. And in every wicked deceit, those who have rejected the truth and the love of truth will be deceived so as not to be saved. So those who do not know in their minds the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ, those who do not know in their minds and their hearts that our Lord Jesus Christ and He alone is the way to salvation, that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our everything. Those who do not know Him and accept the truth of His Gospel and the truth of the Catholic religion will be deceived and not saved. That's what this text says, not me. So if you have a problem with this, take it up with our Lord. The next verse, chapter, verse 11 says, Therefore God is sending them a deceiving power that they may believe the lie. What does that mean? It means basically this. When there is no grace in your life or mine, we fall for anything. We are deceived. We are totally and utterly deceived by every shaman and every false prophet and every demon that comes along. Because we are not in grace. In fact, our minds are closed to truth. And so we need to be in a state of grace. Now, in a similar way, Jesus taught that one of the signs prior to his coming would be the advent of the abomination of desolation in the holy place, in his temple. You find that in Matthew chapter 4, or chapter 24, and in Mark chapter 13, if you want to read it. The abomination of desolation. I preached about this two or three weeks ago. It, in Hebrew is the Hashikutz Meshomem. Hashikutz Meshomem, the abomination of desolation, which means literally the emptying of the place, the depopulating of the place because of a detestable act. And usually the detestable act is the establishing of idols. So that when idols are put into the temple, it is depopulated. It's detestable. It is dirty. The point of Paul is clear in 2 Thessalonians, and I have to wrap this up. What he says ultimately is this. The apostasy, the man of lawlessness, and the desecration of the temple is a unique and unmistakable event which precedes the coming of the day of our Lord. So we have to ask the question, are we in the great apostasy now? Four in ten identify themselves as Catholics, but only one in ten say that they actually believe what the Catholic Church believes. Are we in rebellion? Are we in the great apostasy? Has the temple of the Lord been desecrated with the abomination of desolation? When we see pagan or secular rites going on in our buildings that were built for the worship of God? I'm not answering that question, but I'm asking it. Paul encourages the readers, though, of First and Second Thessalonians when he says all of this about the coming of the apostasy and the man of lawlessness which precedes the second coming of our Lord. What does he say? He says in verse 13, but we ought to give thanks to God for you always, beloved brothers in the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in truth. By the Spirit and belief in truth. Now the epistle says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man created by God in justice and holiness of truth. Who is the truth? Our blessed Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
Without me there is no going, without me there is no knowing, without me there is no living. He says, Paul says to them, to this end, our blessed Lord has called you through our gospel to possess his glory. Then he gives them some advice. And the advice that he gives them echoes down to this day. Are we in the great apostasy? I don't know. Has the man of lawlessness arisen? I don't know. But certainly we are in an age of apostasy. And certainly there is lawlessness in the church. What is St. Paul's advice to the Second Thessalonians? He says, Therefore, brothers, stand firm and hold fast to the tradition that you were taught. And those words are for you and me too. Stand firm and hold fast in the tradition that you were taught. <coughs> Go back for a moment to the introit. I am the salvation of the peoples, says the Lord. In whatever tri tribulation shall they cry out to me, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. Now, once we've understood this, we can look at the rest of the texts of this Mass and understand what's going on. Holiness of truth is the call. In Ephesians, the epistle for today's Mass, St. Paul says, Be ye renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self, created in God's way of righteousness and holiness of truth. Put away all falsehood and speak the truth each to his neighbor. What's he saying? He's saying basically, the response to an age of apostasy, the response to rebellion in God's holy church, the response to a man of lawlessness arising, the response to what we see happening in the corruption of clergy and in the obfuscation of the truth of Catholic belief. The response for us is to be steeped in the Holy Word of God. Read it. Know it. Let it sink into your minds and into your hearts. The response is that I will hold on to the traditional teaching of the Catholic religion. That means know your faith. God who made you without your help will not redeem you without your help. You are called to participate in your own redemption by responding to the grace that God offers us in the traditional Catholic faith. Read the Catechism. And by Catechism, I mean the Roman Catechism. The Catechism of the Council of Trent. It will not lead you astray or the Baltimore Catechism, or the Penny Catechism, or the Catechism of St. Pius X. These catechisms are safe, they're sound. That's how we renew our minds. Huh? Then, put on the new self, he says. How do we put on the new self? By keeping ourselves in a state of sanctifying grace. Go to confession. Don't be afraid to pray the sacramental prayers of the church. Be faithful to the Holy Rosary. Do penance. Receive the Most Holy Eucharist as often as you can. These things help us to put on the new self, to see things differently. Because when we are living in a state of grace, we are seeing things as God intends them to be. We become very honest with ourselves. That's why truth is so important. When we become honest with the world. Now, the gospel in today's Mass, I've, I've spent too much time talking about something else, but the gospel for today's Mass speaks about the marriage feast. All the fathers of the church refer to the marriage feast as a symbol of our blessed Lord's establishing of the church. And those who refuse to come to the marriage feast are symbols of those who are deceived by false teachings and kept outside of the church by their own volition. And the putting on of the marriage garment is to be a symbol of sanctifying grace. So, we know that regardless of whether this is the great apostasy or not, whether or not the man of lawlessness has arisen or not, we know how to respond to it. We are going to let our minds be renewed and put on the new self in the spirit of holiness and justice of truth which is Christ. The last line of chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians says, 
May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and in every word. May the divine grace fall upon your minds and mine. May it seep into our hearts and every fiber of our being so that we may have our minds renewed in the spirit of holiness and the justice of truth who is Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Credo in unum Deum, Patrem omnipotentem, factorem ceri et terre, visibilium omnium et invisibilium, et in unum Dominum Jesum Christum, filium Dei unigenitum, et ex Patre natum ante omnia secula, Deum de Deo, lumen de lumine, Deum verum de Deo vero, genitum non factum, consubstantialem Patri, perquem omnia facta sunt, qui propter nos homines et propter nostram salutem descendit de celis, et incarnatus es de Spiritus Sancto, ex Maria Virgine et homo factus est. Crucifixus etiam pro nobis sub Pontio Pilato, passus et sepultus est, et resurrexit tertia die secundum scriptoras, et ascendit in cerum sedet ad dexterum patris, et iterum venturus est cum gloria iudicare vivos et mortuos, cuius reni non eret finis, et in spiritum sanctum, dominum et vivificantem, qui ex patre filioque procedit, qui cum patre et filio simul adorator et conglorificator, qui locutus est per profetas, et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confite runum baptisma in remissionem peccatorum, et expecto resurrectionem mortuorum, et vitem venturi seculi. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirito tuum. Oremus, si ambulavro in medio tribulationis vivificabis me, Domine, et super irram minimicorum meorum extendes manum tuum, et salvum me facet dextra tua. Sushri Sancte Pater, Omnipotens Eterne Deus, Sancti Maculata Mostem, Comego in Dinus Famos Tuus, O Frutibi Deo Meo Vivor Vero, Pro Numerabili Bus Peccatis, Repensioni Bus Ad Negligentis Meis, Et Pro Nibus Circumstanti Bus Ad Pro Nibus Fidelibus Christianis Vivis Ad Quae Defunctis, Ut Mici Et Iris Profici Ad Salutem In Vita Eterna. Da nobis periuris aquae vinis de lumen sufficient volibilitatis, esse consortis quae humanitatis nostri fieri, vignatus es particeps, Jesus Christus. Omnus nobis, qui tecum vivi de regna, Offerimus tibi Domine Calicem, salutaris tuum de precantis comenciam, ut in conspectu divine maiestatis tua et pro nostra tortius mundo salute cum odore suavitatis ascendat. In spiritu humilitatis. 
Orate fratre, sut mea mac vestrum sacrificium acceptabile fiat apodem patrum omnipotentem. Recipia Dominus sacrificium de manibus tuis, a laudem e gloria am nomine sui, adulitatem corque nostram totiusque ecclesia suis. Amen. Munar hec munar quesimus nomine. Que oculus tuis maestatis oferimus salutaria nobis esse concede, per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivi de regnati in unicate Spiritus Sancti Deus. Per omnia secula seculorum, amen, as dominid, os quesimus domine ostia, Sancti Ioannus confessoris tui meritis benignis assume, e presta ut super omnia, et omnes propte te diligentes corde tibi et opere pace amos. Per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivi de regnat in unicate Spiritus Sancti Deus. Per omnia secula seculorum, Dominus vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sursum corda, abemus a Dominum, gratia segamus Domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, vere dignum et justum est, ecum et salutare, nos tibi semper dubique gratia sagere, Domine, Sancte Pater, Omnipotens Eterne Deus, qui cum unigenito filio tuo et spiritus sancto, unus es Deus, unus es Dominus, non in unius singularitate persone, sed in unius trinitate substantiae. Quod enim de tua gloria revelante te, credimus, hoc de filio tuo, hoc de spiritus sancto, sin ne differentia discrezione sentimus, ut in confessione veri sempiter neque deitatis, et in personis proprietas, et in essentia unitas, et in maestate adoretur equalitas, quam laudant angeli, atque archangeli, cerubim quoque ac serifim, qui non cessan clamare cotidie una voce dicentes. Sanctus, 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 tonto, Domus Deus Sabon, pleni sunt cedi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Memento Domine, pamelorum, pamelorum, qui tu varum. Et omnium circumstantium quorum tibi fidis, cum nut est, et nut e devotio procribus tibi oferimus, vel qui tibi offerunt hoc sacrificium laudis, pro se suis queonibus pro edem zonem arum tua suarum, pro spe salutis et incolumitatis suae tibi quereidum potus suae eterno deo vivo et vero, Comunicantes et memoriam venerantes in primis quedosa sempre virginis Maria gentricis Dei et Domini nostri Iesu Christi. Sede beate Iosef Ius dem virginis sponsor beatorum apostolorum et martyrum tuorum. Petri, Paule, Andrei, Iacobi, Ioannis, Tommi, Iacobi, Filipi, Bartolomei, Matei, Simonis, et Tadei, Nini, Clady, Clementis, Sixti, Cornelici, 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 Cornelici
Sir Dolan Dolan Gordon Merritt is pressure goes quick and shade us. Would an omnibus protection is too many are knowing zero period with the Christ and Dolan Dolan Gordon Merritt. Anche ci torna a Brazio, non serve tutti i nostri essere quinti e femminili, tu e qua siamo i domini. Ui placato se ci piesti, esque i nostri essere in tua pace e disponas. Atque ad eterna donazione non serve, ed in la tua ancora mia, mi scrivi in varai. Per Cristo un domino nostro. Amen. Quamo Brazio, non tu Deus, non mi scrivi, non benedicta, non scripta, non rata, non razio, non mi concepta, non mi faccio, non mi vedis. Ut nobis corpus et sangis, fie benitissimi, fini tui, domini nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui pridire quam patore tur, ac cepit panem in sanctas ac venerabiles manus suas, ed elevate toquis in cielo, amante Deum Patrum Suum Omnipotentem, tibi gratis agens, a benedixit, a pregit, ed it quae discipli suus dicens, ac cipite et manducate ex homo omnes, Hoc est eni corpus meum. Simili modo posquam cenatum est accidiens rum peclarum calicem in sanctas ac venerabiles manus suas. Item tibi gratis agens benedixit, dedit quid discipli suis dicens, ac cipite et bibite ex eo omnes. Hic est enim calic sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testament. Mysterium fidei qui pro vobis et pro multis e fondetur in remissionem pegador. E quod si es cum que feceritis me moriam facietis. Servi tui, sere plebs tua, sancti estem Christi, vidi tui, domini nostri, dami. Supro que propizio ex regno, voto respicere dignieris, recepta veri sicut e cepta veri dignatus es, Muna repuri tu iius te abel, et sacrificem patriarche nostri abre, et quod tibi opel sum sucedus tuus mihis et ex sanctum sacrificem immaculata nostia. Supplices te rogamus omnipotens Deus, iube heque verbe manus, un sublime altare tuum in aspecto divina maestatis tu iur corpum, ex alc altaris participazione sacro sanctu fidi tu i corpus, et sanguinem sum serimus, Omne benedictione celeste et gratia ve te amor, periundem Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Memento etiam Domine, homolorum vam lorumque tuorum, qui nos precisserum cum Signor fide, et Domium den somno pacis. Ipsis Domine Domine, vos in Christo crescente vos locum refrigeri, luges et pacis, ut indulges te precamor, periundem Christum Dominum nostrum. Nobis quoque peccatoribus, famus tuus de multitudine misurationum duarum superanibus patrum mali, quam in societatum venari dinieris, cum tuus sanctus apostolus et materibus camiwanis de la nomatia pana pregnatio. Alexandro Marcellino Petro Felicitatio Perpetua Agata Lucinieris, in omnibus sanctus, in rocorum nos consortium nomis de patrum mali, se bene quesimus lagitur admite, per Christum Dominum nostrum, per quem e comnes Dominus et Verbona Creus sanctificas, Vivificas, benedicis et prestas nobis.
per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso est video patrem nepotenti in unitate spiritus sancti omnes omnes et gloria per omnia secula seculorum oremus preceptis salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formate demus dicere Pater noster qui es in celis, sanctificeto nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debito nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentazione. Salidra nostra malum. Amen. Libra nos quesimus domine, bonibus malus preteritis presentibus culturis, et intergerente beata gloriosa, sempre virgine dei genitrici Maria con beatis. Paolo, et quen re, dominibus sanctis, namro mi, rendiemus nostris. Dopi misericordiae tua giudia, et peccatus simus, sempre libri, et bonibus perturbazione, securi. Iesum Christum Filium Tuum, qui te convivi de regna de unita de Spiritu Sancti Deus. Per omnia secula seculorum, Pax Domini, sit semper vobiscum, hic mixit consecratio corpore, sit semis Domini nostri Iesu Christi, nobis in vina me eterna. Amen. Agnus de equitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, Agnus de equitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, Agnus de equitolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis patrum, Domini Iesu Christi, qui dixis di possus tuus patrum, Domini Iesu Christi, Et fac mi tu es sempre in hurri mandata sed et in num quam severa permitas, qui come eodem Deo Patris, Spiritus Sancta Vivis, Trinus Deus in saecula, saeculorum, amen. Percepsi corpus tui, Domini Iesu Christi Godego, in Dino Sumer, presumo in amici, perveni et mi vicium in panem nazionem, sepul nomi, in nota permiti, et tutum et dementis, et corpus et medirum perceviem, non qui vivis regus cum Deo Patris, non in nota permiti, et Deus per unia saecula, saeculorum, amen. Panem celeste, ma che vi amen. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Corpus Domine nostri Iesu Christi questo re. Sanguis Domine Nostri Iesu Christi Custodio Domine Meum in Vita Medea. Peter Deo Omnipotente, Beati Maria Semper Virgini, Beato Michele Arcangelo, Beato Ioni Baptiste, Sancti Apostoli Petro e Paolo, Beato Pater Nostro Agostino, Omnibus Sancti Settivi Pater, qui efficavi in imis coritazione verbo ad opere, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ideo precor Beata Mariam Semper Virginem, Beato Michele Arcangelum, Beato Ioni Baptista, Sanctus Apostolos Petrum e Paolum, Beatum Patrum Nostrum Agostinum, Omnes Sanctus et Te, Pater, orare pro me a Dominum Deum Nostrum. Miseriatu vestri omnipotens Deus, timisis pecatis vestris, peducat vos ad vitam eternum. Amen. 
indulgentium absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum pestuarum tribut vobis omnipotens et misericoris dominus. Amen. Ece agnus de, ece qui tolet peccata mundi. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tres sub tectum meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sen abitor anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tres sub tectum meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sen abitor anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in tres sub tectum meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sen abitor anima mea. Corpus Domine nostri Jesu Christi custodem tuum in vitam eterna. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Custodentum in vitam eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Custodentum in vitam eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Custodentum in vitam eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Custodentum in vitam eternam. Amen. Sumus Domine Puri Mitigatum, Sedimus Noe Temporali Fiat Nostri, 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 Corpus Tuum Domine Cusum Si, Et Sanius Computavi, Ad Heriat Vesceribus Meis, Et Presta Lumena, Locum pura santa revicera sacramenta, qui vivis e regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Tu mandasti mandato tua custodire inimis, utinam dirigantur viei mei, ad custodiendas justificationes tuas. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo, orremus, tua nos domine, medicinalis operatio et nostris, perversitati bus clementer expediat, et tuis semper facet in errere mandatis. Per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Firium Tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Oremus, preziosi corporis et sanguinis tui, Domine, pasti deliciis, tuam supplices de precamor clementiam, Ota Sancti Ioannes, confessoris tui, meritis et exemplis, eius dem caritatis imitatores effecti, consortes simus et gloriae, qui vivis et regnas cum Deo Patri in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum, ite misa est. Placet tibi sancta trina. Presta le sacrificium quod oculus tuae maestatus in dignus ob tui. Tibi se acceptabile mici quod omnibus pro quibus illud ob tui. Sit te miserante propitiamere per Christum nomen. Amen. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. 
Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum. Et cum Spiritus Vobiscum. Initium Sancte Evangelii secundum Ioannem. Gloria tibi, Domine. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud Deum, et Deus erat verbum, hoc erat in principio apud Deum. Am omnia per ipsum factus sunt, et sine ipsu factum est, nici cur factum est. In ipsu vita erat, et vita et lux hominum, et lux in tenebris lucet, et tenebra eum non comprehenderunt. Fuet omum Iisus Odeo, cui nomen erat Ioannis, hic venit in testimonium, et testimonium per ribere de lumine, ut omnes crederent per illum. Non erat ille lux, sed ut testimonium per ribere de lumine, erat lux vera, quae illuminat omnem hominem venientem in hunc mundum. In mundo erat, in mundus per ipsum factus est, in mundus eum non cognovit, in propria venit, et sui eum non receperunt. Quod quod autum receperunt eum, dedit eis potestatem pirius dei fieri, esque credunt in nomine eus, qui non ex sanguinibus neque ex volontate carnis, neque ex volontate viri, sed ex Deo nati sunt, et verbum carro factum est, et habitavit in nobis, et vidimus gloriam eus gloriam quasi unigenitia patre, plenum gratiae et veritatis. Deo grazie. Deo merito.